why do we need more wealthy moms with good moral value? So first of all, let's define wealth because this is where sometimes the controversy comes. Wealth, as we define it in the woman's school, is the abundance of time, treasure, and talent for the purpose of contribution. And I think it's important to not isolate it just as money because our talents are are, are also our wealth and so is our time greater than I think our treasure. And our treasure could be not just monetary, but it could be an extra you know, house, an extra something that we could share. And so it's important. Money is important, but it's important to understand the purpose of it. Wealth as an end in itself does not actually fulfill us. Wealth as a means to greater contribution to you know, you know, the good of society for what is true, good, and beautiful is necessary. So it, we're not, you know, everybody is, you know, wealth could be $200, wealth could be $500, wealth could be $500 million, $200 million. It's for you to define what wealth means for you. So that's first and foremost. Why do I think mothers need to be wealthy? So number one, you need to define what wealthy mother is for you. Wealth of time, wealth of your treasures to maximize your potential, and wealth of your talent. How are you giving your talent back? So this is how I want us to actually think of wealth as not exclusive as money. Now, let's talk about your talent. Our talent needs to be developed as mothers. We can't use motherhood as an excuse to actually not develop whatever talent we have, whether it's speaking, writing, sewing, singing. We need to find the time to say, if my talent is better served to sing at church, to write a blog, to maybe I don't know, coach a soccer, then we're saying I'm utilizing my talent for my ability to contribute to the highest good. But not only going to soccer, not only singing, you're actually developing your talent. Like if I'm called to speak and I'm just going to go and speak and not continue developing my talent, well, I could miss the opportunity to expand my highest potential. We need to be continually developing our talent. And I think that's a beautiful thing is that motherhood is not a place of arrival. It's this place of expansion and continuous growth. And so when we think about wealth and we think about our, our, our talent, it's continuous because as we continue to grow and, and chisel our talent, we could discover new things about us that we never did before. That's the same for me. And with business to me, I felt like, oh, I never really dreamt of being in business. I just had a dream of training women. It was my passion, which led me to say, well, if I wanted to train millions of women, not just thousands, I actually need to learn how to build a business. Oh boy. <laughs> what was that like to build a business? Now I'm learning to build a business. Oh, it actually need, means that you need to actually learn how to speak. Oh, are you joking? I need to learn how to speak. Oh, I actually need to learn how to write a book and learn how to book write fast and efficiently. So those things I wasn't aware of. And I sort of, you know, said, okay, I'm going to build a business. My, you know, the opportunity came upon as I continued to actually step into developing my potential. So that's what I want you to think about yourself is that motherhood is a place for us to expand our wealth, which is our talent, a treasure. So financially, what good would extra 200, 500, a million, $2,000 be in this particular season of your life? Let me give you an example. Jack Ryan, um, my oldest son, uh, you know, has always played golf since he was nine months old. I never knew that it was actually kind of a unique situation because I married Ryan, who was a, you know, um, professional golf teacher. And I just thought that was normal. I didn't realize that he really had a talent for golf. So fast forward to now, he has always played golf. He excelled. He always won tournaments. He kind of, you know, almost made it to the masters, the, um, the trip, trip, trip and butt for the kids. And so part of this is that his coach came up and said, listen, this is how much it costs to actually train at the highest level. And this year he decided uh, in his own volition, we kind of gave him a fork on the road and say, listen, if you really want this, and this is part of your call that you can either homeschool or you can go to school. And so I kind of, we were sort of detached or hands off. My role is to provide the opportunities for him and the best opportunities for him to fulfill his divine call. And so anyways, he decided to homeschool, which I thought was wow. And he was, you know, developing skill after skill and we really realized his coach wasn't the best coach. And so we were looking for the best coach and that's what we train him and say, listen, you, you know, there's a recipe for success. You find the best person who's done it, the best coach, and that's where you go. And that's where you train after, because if that's your call, you want to fulfill your call and find the best person to help you fulfill your call. And then we got sort of slapped with like, okay, this is how much coaching with this, you know, we found this great coach and it's like, oh, it's actually X, Y, and Z per hour. And so you know, my role as a mom is say, how can I build wealth to support his call? So that if he's called to play golf at the highest level, and I always sort of prayed and hoped that he would use his golf career to bring glory back to God. 
then I, in some ways, am obligated to make sure that he fulfills that call, which means I need to fulfill my call to actually make enough money to support his call. Now, not everybody's called to that. And I think to, to playing golf or, you know, to support that financially, my invitation for you is that let's think outside of the box and maybe think, well, what if I was actually called to su- financially support my children's call? And what if I didn't actually, because I didn't want to think of money as a, as a means for good, or I had a very limited mindset about money, or I was told money is bad and evil and the source of all things bad, then maybe I wouldn't seek out extra money that could then help with helping your child fulfill your call. And I think the question is, is that, are you culpable for that? I would dare say for, in my opinion, that I am, that I feel like I am, if I'm called to build wealth and that wealth, whatever number that is for you to support your family, and I'm not doing in some degree, I'm responsible for Jack Ryan not developing to his maximized potential simply because I have, you know, limiting beliefs or refuse to see things in a different light. Time is the same thing. Time is our greatest wealth. We have a very finite amount of time in this world to fulfill our God-given commission. And to me, I, you know, time is everything with eight children and building a business. And so I have to be a good steward of my time and my time I need to hold account for to say, is this contributing to the people around me, to the lives around me, to what I'm called to, to my family? And that's how we need to think of our wealth as time, treasure, and talent is the sole purpose of contribution, whether it's to my son to, to fulfill his call, whether it's extra money to for organizations, um, whether it's extra time to um, serve an organization or maybe to give your talent. It's massive. And for me, you know, I am called to you know build wealth, but also to help women build wealth and define wealth, however way you want to define it. That's what I feel called to, and everybody you know, has to have that, you know, kind of relationship with what that looks like for them and their own family. And also in that particular season of life, because what wealth to me, you know, with four kids was different than what it is now, both with time, treasure and talent. So I think for me, because I'm called to, to, you know, not only build my own wealth, but also help other women build wealth. I, my own fuel comes from the fact that I think a lot of wealth right now financially or people who have time because they're able to buy money with their time, time with their money is, is I think used for evil. And I look at all the things that are funded by people with lack of character, with lack of value, with no understanding what it means to be human being. And I think do I have an obligation to build wealth for the purpose of actually fighting evil in the world? And in my opinion, I do. I do as a mom. I do as a wife. I do as a woman of faith. I do as a citizen of this country to say, if evil, if if a lot of the bad stuff out there is, is funded, if evil is funded by a lot of money, then I feel obligated to make a lot of money to fund what is good and to counter the evil. Otherwise, evil continues to grow because I'm broke. And I'm not fulfilling my call and you're broke and you're fulfilling your call. And so what we need to think about is not just make money, enough money. And I think that's the narrative for mothers. You just make enough for yourself. I'm like, in some ways, that is a selfish way of thinking. Because if we truly are living in a way where we're living a lives as active contribution, we don't want to just make enough money for ourselves. I want to make enough money to contribute to my father's retirement, make enough money to contribute to my children's call, to my community, to Ryan's, you know, sister's orders, to the community or the organizations I'm passionate about. Like if we then just inhibit ourselves to saying you just make enough money because money doesn't make you happy. Well, it doesn't make you directly happy, but it sure then ushers time with people that could usher your happiness, right? Spending quality time. And we just went on vacation and we rented this nice um, waterfront in Annapolis. And I told my children, I said, listen, the purpose of time 
of making money is to use it for quality time. And so I always bring it back down to purpose for them. And so bringing it back now to why, why we need mother of values to make, you know, to build greater wealth, because we need more people that are going to use wealth for a greater contribution, both of time, treasure and talent. And I think we need to shift this narrative of the idea that money is bad and evil money is neutral. And I think we are slowly kind of shifting that narrative that money is neutral, but it's so deeply embedded in <clears throat> women's subconscious that automatically it's sort of this resistance of, okay, okay, money is not bad, but I don't want to make money because my kind of subconsciously makes me feel like I'm just kind of bad and not a good mom. And, and I just think that that narrative has inhibited our ability to create a beautiful and meaningful experience and home for our children. And wealth could be defined in whatever number you think it could be, but the call is that you're fulfilling your unique call to contribute to the world, whatever that looks like wealth-wise, time, treasure, and talent. And that's my invitation to you is that if you are open to replacing some of the limiting beliefs as a mom and wealth, then perhaps doors of opportunities could open, not just for you, but for the lives and the people you love around you. And so I want to just drop that seed of thought in there and really ask yourself, how can we? truly bring greater good and more good and fight the evil in the world using our time, treasure, and talent for the sole purpose of contributing to the lives and the people in the community and the country around us. So think about it and ask yourself, where are you in your wealth journey?